Welcome to the New England Collaborative Data Management Curriculum Case Study Presentation. In this video, I will share with you on how to develop a research case. I am Julie Goldman, a current library fellow at the Lamar Soder Library at University of Massachusetts Medical School. Here is an outline for what I will touch on in this presentation. I will share with you the case study methodology, what it is and how it works for NECDEMIC. I will share with you how to develop a case study. You will need background, you will conduct an interview, you will create a narrative, you will create discussion questions, ending with developing a data management plan. The NECDEMIC research case study. I will share with you a case study I developed focusing on zebrafish research. And lastly, I will touch on how you can use the case studies in NECDEMIC or develop your own case studies on how to teach data management. A large part of NECDEMIC curriculum uses case studies to teach the best practices in data management for many different science disciplines. Case studies are used in many areas of education, including science, business, and law. The case study method is a great educational tool because it presents problems users must attempt to solve within acceptable, accept, acceptable practices. It gives teachable moments that are useful for educating others it highlights specific, in this case, data management practices or needs of a specific discipline or type of research. They build an understanding, again, in this case, scientific research, or it could be any educational focus. And lastly, case studies prepare users for similar situations in the future so that they will know how to react when needed. So how do you create a case study? The first step is to identify the environment that you will be working in, such as background information on the institution, the researcher, the research pro project. You really should focus on the who, what, when, where, and why about a research project. Next, you will hold a data interview with a researcher and then write a narrative on that research project focusing on the life cycle of the pro project. This narrative should also include uh, discussion questions that highlight the data management issues. And the NECDEMIC case studies um, include teachable, mo teachable points, uh, the narrative, and discussion questions. And lastly, Using these three resources, you can craft a mock data management plan that could be used for researchers to understand the data management needs in their project. So in, cre um, in holding a data interview, you really want to address the data lifecycle issues and begin to implement a data management plan. You should acquire as much information as possible from the researcher. You should ask questions on the data story, the purpose of the project, and the lifespan of the project. And this is a great resource um, from our science boot camp. This video features uh, University of Medical School librarians discussing how to talk to researchers. So I suggest watching this video to get some hints and tips for how to talk to scientific researchers about their project. So this is an example of a typical research life cycle uh, focusing on the data flow in the center where it says data life cycle. So librarians are typically found downstream in the project focusing on collecting books, journals, or data sets, and really dealing with the data discovery or archiving. 
our focus for librarians should be more upstream at the iteration or project start and be more involved with the planning, with data collection, organization, and description. So I'm going to share with you a case study example that is in our NECDEMIC curriculum. Uh, this shows the model organism neuroscience research lab case study. So some background on this research case. Again, you want to, con to find all of their background information about your institution, your researcher, as much information as you can find about the research pro project before conducting your initial data interview. So in this case study, the researcher I talked to was a third year graduate student at The Ohio State University and her areas of focus were neurotrauma, neurological disorders, and gene therapy. So she worked at a research lab at The Ohio State University and worked in the BD lab in the Department of Neuroscience and they work with zebrafish as their model organism. And the focus of their research is using zebrafish as a model system for studying motor axon guidance and motor neuron diseases. Their research questions include, what is the biological basis of the motor neuron disease, SMA? How can modeling ALS in zebrafish be useful as a tool for drug and genetic screening? And what genes define motor axon outgrowth? After having this initial background information about my researcher, the institution, and the research questions, I was ready to go through the steps in setting up, conducting, and analyzing a data interview. First, you want to create an interview instrument, and there are a lot of options for templates. One option is the John Hopkins University Data Management Services questionnaire to help with the creation of a data management plan. Other examples include the Digital Curation Center's checklist for data management plan, Purdue's data information literacy interview instruments, and the University of Virginia Data Interview Initiative. So in addition to using a template, you should create your own questions related to the specific researcher or research project. I suggest going one question at a time and avoid using yes or no questions to get full open-ended responses from your researcher and to get as much information as possible. You want to limit your questions to core aspects so I might have too many initial questions and should narrow my focus to the who, what, when, where, why about the project. When setting up an interview, initially ask for 30 minutes from your researcher, although you may talk longer. You can also conduct your interview over Skype or the phone. I suggest using follow-up questions during your interview and offer check-ins and copies of your interview transcript. If you need to, I suggest following up with your researcher after your initial meeting. In my follow-up, I sent specific questions via email to my researcher. Even then, I felt like I needed more information so I set up a second follow-up meeting with my researcher. Make sure you fully understand the research, and this shows your dedication to the project, but do not become too overbearing or disruptive to the researcher's project process. A final suggestion in what I learned from my research interview 
I should have done more initial investigation beforehand on the background of the researcher and the research project. This would have saved some time and some follow-up down the road. Again, focus on the who, what, when, where, and why about your research project. So after conducting your data interview, you are ready to construct your narrative from your interview transcript. The case narrative is the telling of the story of the research project and the research data lifecycle. It should include as many details as possible and point out missing pieces or challenges the researcher expresses. So now I will share with you the research case. In this neuroscience research lab, they are investigating the biological basis of motor neuron diseases, SMA, and ALS. These are genetic and molecular, there are genetic and molecular cues that guide motor axons to their target muscles. This lab is using a zebrafish model for their diseases. Research project has been going on since 1996 and they have received multiple grants from the NIH. So they have an NIH R01 award and which is made to support a discrete specified project and the government is strict about the data keeping and can ask to see the data and lab notebooks at any time and NIH has the legal right to audit or examine or record relevant in any research grant award. They are also receiving private funding from SMA and ALA families, ALS families, foundations, organizations, and private companies as well. So I'm just going to go through a quick overview of SMA and ALS. SMA helps to understand the research experiments and data collected. Sorry, let me start over. I totally read that wrong. <laughs> okay. Let me give a quick overview of SMA to help understand the research experiments and the data collected. Low levels of survival of motor neuron SMN protein leads to muscle atrophy and weakness. It occurs early in life and is the leading genetic cause of death in infants and toddlers. So the lab is trying to use zebrafish as a genetic model of SMA. They're using protein knockdown technology in zebrafish development Cell death in SMA is caused by no motor neuron defects early in development. They use a scoring system on fluorescent microscope images to determine conditions and development of these motor neurons. Here is an overview of ALS. Muckle, muscle weakness and atrophy throughout the body are caused by degeneration of the upper and lower motor neurons. Superoxide dismutase 1 soluble or SOD1 is a gene responsible for the enzyme on chromosome 21 that protects the body from radicals. If free radicals accumulate, they can damage DNA and proteins produced within cells. In the research lab, they are looking at two specific gene mutations and correcting the effects of the mutant SOD1 gene. They use zebrafish larvae to understand the defects in early stages of the neuron development. In this slide, I have examples of microscope images of zebrafish. In the center, the OPN, OPTN, is a amino acid protein with many functions that interacts with other protein mutations that have been associated with ALS. 
OPTN interacts with proteins SOD1 and G93A in ALS and cause motor axon anexopathy and mutant SOD1 increases this axonopathy. And as you can see on the right, axonopathy is when the motor axon totally degrades. So from the previous slide, you could see that zebrafish larvae are easy to use as an experimental model organism. They're easy to see through, and they are used for many kinds of scientific research. So why zebrafish? They're, the model is fully established, their genome is fully sequenced, they are well understood, easily observable, they have testable developmental behaviors, they have rapid embryonic development, they have large, robust, transparent embryos, they can develop outside their mother, and they have similar similarities to mammalian models and humans. An important factor in this research project is therefore the zebrafish facility. The facility supports three research labs, therefore there are up to 10 to 12 people using fish for different projects. Each person has their own fish and they are labeled accordingly. Common stock for breeding and controls are used by all research labs. There is a facility manager who oversees the breeding facility and IACU compliance, which is institutional animal care and use and control. In their facility, they use a Google Drive database for logging information and updates on their fish and experiments. My researcher described their, her work in the lab as general lab work. She runs PCR, which is polymerase chain reaction, which amplifies copies of a particular DNA sequence, running agarose gel electrophesis, which is DNA manipulation and separation, doing western blots to detect protein levels, and doing microscope imaging and using a scoring system on the motor axons. Here are some examples of the equipment and products that are being used and produced in the research lab. As you can see, most of the files being produced are in Excel, and there are a lot of hard copies being produced via film or being scanned and printed, such as the agarose gels, which are read on a gel box and then printed and then pasted into a lab notebook. So again, these are some of the programs they're using for data analysis and imaging. And as you can see, some of the programs are proprietary and not easily shareable especially image J. So now I will go through a typical data flow within the research lab. Typical data flow involves analysis of direct microscope images of manipulated fish samples or gel images of DNA and protein analysis. These image, image files are produced on computers that are attached to the lab equipment, and files are analyzed on a computer or sent to the researcher's personal computer. For example, when taking a fluorescent microscope image, they are saved on the computer attached to the microscope, 
which are then printed out and sent to other computers. So you have a hard copy of the, of the experiment as well as a digital copy on someone's computer in the lab. The lab does not have standardized way to document its data. They have no file naming conventions for saving and locating their documents and images, and they have no data dictionary within the lab. Files usually involve a person's name and title or description meaningful only to that person in the lab. These files are then renamed for the principal investigator or when they are ready for publication. I mentioned that a lot of the images that are printed out are then pasted into paper lab notebooks. And the graduate student said that she feels that her lab notebook is more comprehensible and easy to follow than other people in the lab. These labs hold detailed descriptions of the experiments and are housed within the lab. Concerning backup and security, researchers in the lab use their personal computers and they are responsible for external hard drives or backing up the information that they are collecting. My researcher feels that she is good about backing up her files on her computer and her external hard drive, but security is limited to passwords and key access to the building and lab, but these personal computers are being moved between the lab and outside the lab. When my graduate student began working in the research lab, she was given CDs with previous data containing images and data analysis. Currently, the lab shares their data with each other using Google Drive and Dropbox on the university server. And ultimately, the PI is responsible for all the data. In terms of access, my researcher felt that she can get all the data she needs pre-publication. Once the researcher res research is published, then anyone who wants it can access the relevant data in an article. Therefore, anyone can ask for reagents or animals used in a published study. These are some examples of where my researcher and her lab publish their work. And again, because they are sharing their reagents and antibodies and enzymes or fish lines, they are able to share these with anyone who wants them. These are some examples of the re zebrafish research resources that the research lab is sharing their zebrafish information with, including ZFIN, which is an NIH-funded zebrafish model organism database, the zebrafish gene collection, which is also an NIH initiative that supports the production of DNA libraries, clones, and sequences of expressed genes for zebrafish. It's publicly accessible to the biomedical research community. And all of these zebrafish sequences are deposited in GenBank. Lastly, an example is ZF Health, which is a large-scale integrating project funded by the European Commission. The last focus of the case narrative has to do with preservation of this research. In my researcher's case, publications are considered the primary electronic form of data conservation in her lab. NIH does have 
full hold uh, can ask for um, access to data for up to three years following the project. And at the time, NIH's data sharing policy, there was no formal data management plan beyond sharing. So now that I have gone through the case narrative, I will show you what a full research case study should look like. It will include the teaching points, the case narrative, and discussion questions. So here is my example of a case study. It will involve the teaching points, the case narrative, and the discussion questions. Again, you can find this case on the NECDEMIC website under Research Cases. Model Organism Neuroscience Research Lab. So the first part of my research case are the summary of teaching points. These teaching points align with the NSF's um, simplified data management plan, pulling out the data management challenges highlighted in the case narrative. So for example, in module two, types, formats, and stages of data, I highlight that this was a multi-year research project involving live specimen. Instrument data needs to be exported to common or open formats. And that paper lab notebooks have inconsistencies and lack standardization. Next, it goes through a full text narrative of my research case. This addresses the full data life cycle of data collection and production within the research lab. Lastly, I have created discussion questions that again highlight the data management challenges and needs within this case study. So again, an example of a question would be, for types of data, what types of data are being collected for this study? This is an important part to remember when creating a data management plan that librarians can help researchers understand the types of data they are collecting and what that means for preservation, archiving, down the road. So out of this, ideally you would create a DMP or data management plan. A great idea from this is to do a breakout activity using this case study and using the simplified data management plan to create a mock data management plan for librarians to understand the areas they should focus on when creating a data management plan for a research project. So again, I'm going to go back to creating a case study. And these are the things that you need to focus on. You should identify the environment and background information on your institution, your researcher, the research project. You will hold a data interview with your researcher and create a data narrative. From this narrative, you can create discussion questions and then mock up a data management plan for this research case. And all of the NECDEMIC case studies follow this format. So now that you have the methodology for why case studies are useful and, this, and the steps to create one, you should be able to create your own. As you can see, my case was not very long. So you can go through the process, identify a researcher at your own institution or another place, understand the institution or the environment, conduct an interview, create a narrative, create discussion questions to highlight data management needs and challenges. 
And if you create your research case, we can add it to our list of examples on the NECDEMIC site. We are always looking for new areas of science and new disciplines to add to our collection. So NEC follow up from here, case studies are the basis of NECDEMIC. They give examples of real life research projects are crafted in a format that highlights the data management needs and teaches librarians how to identify these problems and how to use the NIH's simplif NSF's simplified data management plan to address these issues and report back to researchers. So look for other videos that address how to identify the data management needs in a research case study, how to develop a DMP, and how to teach with the NECDEMIC curriculum. Here are some tips and reminders to keep in mind when you are conducting your data interview. You should do your homework on your researcher and their research project. This will impress them with your knowledge. You should follow up during and after the interview. Ask more questions to fully understand the project workflow. Make the meeting about the researcher, not about the library, and what the library can do for them quite yet. This first establishes relationships with your institution's researchers and makes researchers see that librarians are interested in the research process and understanding research projects needs, challenges, and issues, and therefore associates the library with data. Once the librarian understands the project, then we can make recommendations on how the library can help with the data needs down the road. So these are some examples of where the research lab publishes, such as science, nature, and articles can be found in PubMed. And anyone can ask for the reagents, antibodies, enzymes, or fish that were used in any published study.